This video is a complete summary of all canon subject matter towards the series in question. It contains spoilers and details for numerous aspects to the story and its events, and is not meant to serve as a replacement to experiencing any of the pieces of media mentioned. Please support the official releases of the developers and their entries in the franchise. Ys, for the moment at least, was safe from the threat of the Darklings and the demonic essence of the Black Pearl. Before bidding the Rota Tree farewell on the surface, Tolfact left his Claria Sword at the base of the tree in case those on the surface would ever need its power. Years later, the Books of Ys, written by the Six Priests, were sent to the surface, locked away in a shrine nearby the crater of the Floating Island and the Devil's Tower. Over time, the legends of the events that took place that day would be passed along thanks to those of the party who stayed behind. Because of what transpired at the summit, the Devil's Tower would later come to be given another name as well, Darm Tower. For the time though, the island was at peace, and those that remained would go on rebuilding, and eventually them and their descendants would work towards making contact with the outside world. Meanwhile, in the other regions of Europa, new consequences were starting to develop from the arrival of the Eldeen. In Salceta, the kingdom was flourishing, thanks to the efforts of Eldeel and Lafance. Eldeel used the Mask of the Sun and the Akazic Records to alter the terrain and conditions of the land of Salceta to make it more inhabitable and fertile for agricultural development. The records were now located in the Temple of the Sun, within the Kingdom of Salceta's capital, the city of El Duque. Salceta was prosperous for a time, however this would not last. The power and actions available to El Deal would lead to the emergence of a dark persona taking shape within him. This corruption turned El Deal's hair and wings pitch black and sought to be a more aggressive deity to the people of Salceta. Instead of actively benefiting the people through the records, this dark Eldeel sought to use the records to create disasters that would force the humans to adapt and strengthen themselves. Fearing the dark persona taking him over completely, Eldeel began work on a counterpart to the Mask of the Sun. Hopefully, this mask would be able to subdue the darkness inside him. However, before it could be completed, the dark counterpart of Eldeel did take over and instantly used the Mask of the Sun and the Records to change the landscape of Salceta, covering it in a forested sea of trees, causing an overgrowth that toppled the civilization overnight. The Fonts, his army, and the subservient being known as Sol Galba waged war on the dark Eldeel to save the world from his evil half. On the final battlefield of the conflict, the Salcedon faction succeeds, completing the Mask of the Moon and Lafonts using it to subdue the personality inside Eldeel, returning him to his original state. However, the Kingdom of Salceta was no more, being reduced to a dense forest that overgrew the civilization's progress. Many of the remaining members of the kingdom would relocate to a small town within the forest known as Highland, and Eldeel would move to the nearby Tower of Providence. As the centuries went on, Eldeel would bring individuals to the tower to teach them something from the records that would benefit all of humanity and help give society a push forward. The descendants of Lafonts would stay in Highland, guarding Eldeel and worshipping him as a god. However, the tower and the nearby village would remain obscured and hidden to the general population within the foliage ocean of Salceta. In the years that follow, a group of Darklings, attempting to distance themselves from their hostile brethren, thought that this would make a good place to lie low. They would settle in a nearby town to Highland, known as Danan Village. Two hundred years after the rising of Ys, 
War breaks out in two of the nearby kingdoms, those of Glia and Britai, engaging in a conflict that would last for a hundred years, the specifics and details of which will become clearer when we discuss the events of East Nine Monstrum Nox later in the series. In the Eurasian Afrokan borderland of Xandria, the kingdom of Kefin mysteriously goes missing in the desert, seemingly overnight, and quickly becomes legend over the next few centuries, a mystery that eludes the locals and foreigners. While the exact time frame is unknown, likely a couple centuries after the Hundred Years' War, the Roman Empire is established, with its capital being Rom in south-central Europa. The faction became the most advanced and wealthy nation on the continent, and was the center of the Hieroglyph Church, the first widespread monotheistic religion on earth. Over time, this empire would become the largest faction in the world and have its influence spread across Europa, bringing its culture, people, and religion to nearly every reach of the continent. Due to its rapid growth and conflicting ideals, the Roman Empire and Afrokan nations such as Altago would be at odds frequently. While all-out war never developed, skirmishes and overall animosity continue amongst the two lands. The five tribes of Altago, who each worshipped a separate dragon deity, the Isca, Edenas, Segrom, Kylos, and Shanoa, had lived in fairly comfortable stability for the past millennia. However, this changed when the Adonians, whose tribe had begun to expand after they started worshipping the tritheistic god of the sea, Gretheos, instead of the water dragon of Altago, Obalon. Perhaps in a fit of perceived superiority, they left Ruins Island to establish their tribe within the much larger Altago city, driving out the current occupants, the Iskins. Over time, the land of Is was beginning to flourish on its own once more. However, it did so under a different name. The land of Is began to mean the portion of the island that now existed above in the heavens, whose overall existence would fade into legend, with no one knowing for sure if it truly existed or not, though the descendants of the priests below would pass on non-specific tales. The surface below became known as the Island of Asteria, a prominent fishing island and exporter of their famed silver from their mines, with the central looming Darm Tower becoming an icon for the island and a reminder of its rich history. Deep within the island's mines, a different metal was discovered, similar to silver, but stronger and more valuable. While they did not know it and kept referring to it as just a different kind of silver, this was in fact the Claria of old that had been rediscovered, the remaining veins created by the Black Pearl hundreds of years past. Traders flocked to Asteria to acquire and sell the new ore. Descendants of Hugo Fact, the family of House Fact, campaigned against this as they knew that Claria was in part responsible for the fall of the Kingdom of East in legend. However, many were angry at House Fact for their intervention in Asteria's prosperity. As a result, a mob, angered at the family, set out and murdered the descendants of House Fact. The final member of the family, Dark Fact, was able to escape and disappeared without a trace. At this point in time, in a small, nameless village, in the mountains, likely within the Garmon region of Europa, a young boy with fiery red hair is born. He is born to a peasant family, the Christians. Not wealthy, but they get by. The boy is named Adol. The Roman Empire had already reached and taken over the region of Felgana, appointing the nobleman Count Maguire as feudal lord of the region. Establishing domain at Veilstein Castle, near the town of Redmont. Arriving with the Empire were two priests of the Roman religion, Nicholas Garland and Sister Nell. Before long, the slumbering Galbalon comes into contact with Bishop Nicholas and turns him into a fanatical worshipper of the evil beast. Nicholas is able to spread the beliefs of Galbalon to his disciple Nell as their corruption festered. 
Nicholas was able to convince Count Maguire to lead an assault on Genos Island, a campaign that involved the massacre of potential descendants of Genos, the Eldine hero who sealed Galbalon all those years ago. Galbalon was nervous that a descendant of Genos could hinder a larger plan meant to restore Galbalon to full power. Maguire was easily persuaded at the prospect of power being offered by Nicholas, and the cull of those on Genos Island was carried out, killing all inhabitants. All with the exception of two children. Chester and Elena Stoddart were able to escape the island's destruction, and made it to the mainland, where they were taken in by the mayor of Redmont, Edgar. There they grew up in the village, becoming friends with the local children, including a gruffer, energetic boy by the name of Dogi. Chester and Dogi trained together under the tutelage of the local warrior, Bearheart. Later, Dogi has the call for adventure build up inside him, and seeks to explore outside of the region, bidding his hometown farewell and journeys off on his own, eventually making his way toward the nation of Asteria, where he works under the honorable thief, Goban Tova. Elsewhere on Asteria, evil was festering within the sorcerer Dark Fact, angered at the violent mob who took his family away from him. He decided that the foolishness of the Asterians and their use of Claria should be their demise. Even with its small connection to the Black Pearl, the usage of Claria over time by humans would gradually give more power to the sealed Black Pearl under the tower. Finally, Dark Fact and the Pearl were strong enough for him to make his move. He used his power to break what was left of the goddess's seal on the Black Pearl and absorb some of its demonic essence, completely giving himself over to the demons. However, he desires more power, power that surely exists on the floating island of Ys. Legend says that the key to reaching the island is in the books of Ys, likely one would need to possess all of them to perform the task. But over time, the books had spread across Asteria, some sealed in caves and others in possession of the descendants of the priests. Fortunately for him, when escaping his family's massacre, he was able to grab the Tome of Fact in his escape. Dark Fact brought the Pearl to the summit of Darm Tower and cast two spells that devastated the island of Asteria. One was to use the Pearl's recently unsealed dark energy to once again return demon kind to the island. The other was to summon a storm wall to the island, a defensive shield of typhoons around Asteria that blockaded its residents from the outside world, preventing anyone from meddling in his plans. No one could get into the island of Asteria, or get out. The awakening of the Black Pearl also awoke the slumbering goddesses, who regained consciousness, but without their wings or memories. Rhea was able to escape the hold under the tower and made her way to the town of Menea, where she was taken in by the fortune teller Sarah Tova, a descendant of Unica, only having Toll's silver harmonica in her possession. Fina wasn't as fortunate. She was instantly captured by dark fact and sealed in a nearby underground shrine, wanting to reduce as many loose ends as possible. Adol Kristen is a young explorer who has been off on his own from his hometown for a while now. He is about 17 years old at the time and looking for a call to take his own journey of self-discovery. He makes his way to the Gillian coastal town of Promalok. Here he learns about the island of Asteria, a nation just off the coast of Promalok and Europa that has been experiencing great hardship, or at least that's what the mainlanders presume. Adol learns that it was once a peaceful fishing island that also exported silver to the Roman Empire. However, it has recently become isolated due to an impenetrable, continuous storm system that now surrounds the nation, known as the Storm Wall. The Storm Wall has lasted for about six months at this point, and no one has been in or out of Asteria since. Most believe the island to be cursed. Adol senses the call for adventure and decides to be the one to finally make it to Asteria and investigate. He borrows a small boat and sets off from Promalok to Asteria in hopes of chasing his destiny. Adol enters the storm wall and it hits him at full force. It tears the boat to pieces and Adol is cast into the ocean. However, he washes ashore along the beaches of Asteria and just barely 
he clings to life. He is rescued by a militiaman named Slaff of the nearby Barbado port. It all rests in the care of Slaff's father, Dr. Bluto. Upon awakening, the parties surprise each other, with Adol learning he has indeed reached Hysteria, and the locals learning someone has finally made it from the outside world. After a couple days of rest, Adol is back on his feet. He talks with Slaff, as well as the rest of the villagers, to learn more about Asteria. The most prominent feature of the island is the massive Darm Tower, that has stood for hundreds of years, looming over the Asterians. It's recently been overrun by monsters ever since the storm wall appeared. He also learns of a fortune teller that resides in the nearby town of Manea, which is also the largest settlement on the island. Upon receiving a simple sword from Slaff, Adol sets off to Minia. With little difficulty, Adol makes it to the town. Afterward, Adol talks to a few townsfolk, trying to find out where the fortune teller resides. A few are a bit startled by the question, as they tell him that Sarah, the fortune teller, has been waiting for a red-haired swordsman for some time now. Adol arrives at the fortune teller's home, and Sarah is excited that he has arrived. Sarah says that she has a request to offer when he's prepared to accept. Adol makes some money to buy a shield and armor in town, and meets a hooded girl named Rhea. She's apparently a poet and friend of Sarah's, who is depressed after losing her silver harmonica, saying it means more than anything to her. Adol promises he'll look out for it before returning to Sarah's. When he returns, Sarah tells Adol about the Books of Ys, Ys was an ancient land that existed on the island hundreds of years ago. Presumably the books of Ys contain not only the history of that land, but a kind of magical power within it as well. She asks Adol if he's willing to retrieve these books, as they may have the answers needed to rid this land of monsters and the evil that has plagued it, as well as the storm wall. Sarah is ecstatic when Adol accepts and informs him that she can see one book being held in a shrine in the mountains, and gives a crystal that will help him navigate the dark passages. Though first, she suggests visiting her aunt Jebba, who lives in Zabik village near Darm Tower, who likely knows more about the history of East than her. Upon arriving in Zabik, Robel, the mayor, informs Adol that nearby thieves led by the mercenary Gobon have stolen a silver bell, as well as other silver items, said to be laden with mystic power, and was the village's former means of protection. He asks Adol to negotiate its retrieval, seeing as how he must have been pretty strong to make it to the village in the first place. Adol then talks to Jeva, who recognizes Sarah's crystal, and notices that Adol must have been the swordsman Sarah had seen in her visions. She hands him the key to the shrine, that is rumored to hold a Book of Ys. She informs Adol that the shrine was formerly much larger, and incorporated the surrounding ruins hundreds of years ago. At that time, the structure was known as the Shrine of Solomon. Before heading to the shrine, Adol investigates the thieves' den. The leader, Gobon, denies having stolen the bell, saying it would be too harmful to the people of Zabik. The mayor finds this hard to believe as there are no other suspects, besides a suspicious-looking cloaked man who some villagers claim to have seen outside of town. With no other leads, Adol decides to focus on his quest, and heads to the shrine to find a Book of Ys. On the way, he saves a wandering poet named Luta Gemma from Zabik, who says he has found himself sleepwalking more prevalently ever since the storm wall appeared six months ago. He says when he dreams, he hears the voice of a woman, and he feels obligated to find her and respond, but cannot ascertain her whereabouts. Upon arriving at the shrine near Darm Tower, Adol uses the shrine key to delve deeper, as he takes on a mysterious wizard who is blocking access to the lower levels. He defeats the creature, and makes his way to the basements of the shrine. There he finds the silver bell, and a mysterious key that later on unlocks a prison door, where a young woman is being held. She says her name is Fina, and she remembers nothing prior to being locked up in the cell by a man in a black cape, who seems to be able to control the monsters. She insists Adol leaves and saves himself, but he refuses and offers to take her back to the village. They make their way out of the shrine, but at the entrance to Zabik, Fina collapses from exhaustion. Adol carries her to Jabba's to rest, while in the meantime Adol returns the silver bell to the mayor. With Fina safe, however, Adol decides to return to the shrine to complete his main quest, 
find the Book of Ys. Deeper in the shrine, Adol locates a serpent-like creature who is guarding one of the legendary books, a resurrected Nightilger. After defeating the beast, Adol recovers one of the books. He returns to Zavik and finds that Fina has recovered from her fever, however her memory still hasn't returned. Suddenly a messenger arrives, and Adol hears that there has been an attack made on Minia. Without hesitation, Adol returns to the coastal city to check on Sarah. However, upon entering the fortune teller's abode, Adol is met by the town elder, Franz. He relays the unfortunate news. Sarah has been murdered. Sarah had seen Franz prior to her death and told him she could foresee it coming, but not how it would happen. She believed it was because she held a mysterious book and instructed Franz to hang on to it until Adol returns so he can receive it. Adol takes the book and can recognize it to indeed be one of the six books of Ys. In her dying breaths, Sarah gave Franz a message to tell Adol to go to the abandoned mines at Rastin. Adol first heads back to Zabik to relay the passing of her niece to Jeba. She's heartbroken, but at peace knowing she finally got to see Adol arrive on Asteria. Jeba offers to translate and read the two books of Ys that he now has. The Book of Hadol, and the Book of Tova. Jeba reveals that her and her niece share the Tova name and are the descendants of the house, likely Unica. Fina is also back on her feet and is becoming popular in the village. The abandoned Rastin is a hostile place. Monsters have taken over, and when the mines aren't labyrinthine to navigate, they are in a dilapidated state. Eventually, though, Adol finds some silver materials, no doubt left over from the mine's heyday, even an armor set. He also finds Rhea's silver harmonica deep in the mine, as well as an item later identified as a rota tree seed. Quickly taking a detour to return the harmonica, Adol also stops by what he has heard from the townsfolk as the sacred rota tree, a spiritual entity that has long protected the island. Adol feels compelled to peel the shell off the rota seed and eats the nut inside. It's surprisingly sweet and mellow, but a shudder runs down his spine. Suddenly, a voice starts to appear in Adol's mind. He turns towards the tree, and the tree identifies itself as the Great Rhoda Tree. It encourages Adol to go forth and combat the darkness, and gives him a sword made of Asterian silver, the Great Clarion Sword, owned by the legendary hero, Toll Fact. Adol then returns Rhea's silver harmonica to the girl in Minea. She is overlooking the island from the ramparts, and after thanking Adol, offers to play him a song, which he accepts. Now armed with the silver sword, Adol returns to the abandoned mine. Defeating the monsters that grow more deadly, the deeper into the mine he goes. He succeeds, and obtains the third book of Ys. Now, half of the books are in his possession. Upon returning to Zabik, Adol asks Jaba to read the next book of Ys, the Book of Davi. Jaba reveals that long ago the land of Ys was part of Asteria, and was ruled by the twin goddesses and six priests. Sarah and Jaba are descendants of one of those priests, the priest Tova. Fina and Adol grow closer, talking about what Jaba has taught Fina, and how she's happy to finally be free from her indefinite prison. She fears regaining her memories, though. She wants to remember, but is worried about what these memories might show. Jaba reveals that the final three books of Ys lie within Darm Tower. She recommends Adol talk to Goban for more information on the tower. He's a leader of a group of noble thieves, and also Jaba's son. Adol visits Goban, who informs him that Jaba has already briefed her son on the situation, says Darm Tower has been demonically infested since the Stormwall's appearance, and his group suffered heavy casualties when they tried to initially quell the threat. His right-hand man, Dogi, went missing in the raid, and his whereabouts in the tower are unknown. While he wants to be sure that Adol is prepared, he is willing to allow Adol access to Darm Tower if he feels strong enough. Adol assures him he is, and Goban leads the swordsman through a dark tunnel to a door which leads to the first level of the tower, where Adol can start climbing. Goban wishes him luck and thanks him for his bravery. Adol begins to ascend through the floors of Darm Tower, collecting left-behind equipment as he finds it. 
Six floors up, he approaches a simple room guarded by three suspicious skull statues. Before he can get close enough to investigate further, the statues knock out the hero and teleport him away. When Adol awakens, he finds himself in a prison cell where all of his silver belongings have been taken away. In the prison cell, he finds Luda Gemma, who claims that he indeed sleepwalked into the tower. When he awoke, he was ambushed and thrown into the cell. The two wait for some time. There doesn't appear to be any apparent way of getting out of this cell. There's no one around, and the walls seem too thick to break through. Or so they thought. Suddenly, there's some rumbling in the distance, and out of nowhere, a section of wall comes crashing down, and a blue-haired stranger emerges. He tells them to relax. His name is Dogi, and he's here to help. Thankfully, wall crushing is his specialty. He overheard of some prisoners down here, and decided it would be worth getting some help to make their way out of this tower. He also mentions that three floors up, there's an old man, who's been in Darm longer than anyone. If Adol insists on continuing through the tower, he should talk to the one named Raba and give him the idol that Dogi borrowed from him. Adol finds the hidden passage that Raba is hiding, and the two discuss. Raba says he is a scholar by trade and came to Darm Tower in search of ancient knowledge. He was here six months ago, when the monsters first appeared, and has been in hiding ever since. The idol has shielded his presence these past few months. Raba says he's heard of Ys, but it's been stricken from the texts of old. No one knows where it lies, besides that it formerly was here in Asteria. Raba offers a necklace he has, in exchange for the idol. While the monsters will see Adol again, the trap statues won't, and he can proceed further up Darn Tower. On the higher floors, Adol finds his stolen silver equipment, and runs into Dogi once more, saying that he owes Raba for keeping him safe over the past few months, so he's scouting out the tower for him. Adol leaves and the two wish each other good fortune. A couple floors higher, Adol discovers a room guarded by a fierce mantis beast, a returning Pictimos, which when beaten, gives Adol access to the fourth book of Ys and a silver hammer. Further up, the fifth book of Ys is found, and Adol comes across Luta and Raba, who have been separated. Raba's idol had broke, and the two got lost in the tower. They have found safe rooms which should protect them for the moment, but encourage Adol to discover the cause of the monsters further up the tower. Also, further up there's a small tower annex protruding out. Raba has overheard that there is someone imprisoned in the annex, and requires help. Adol makes his way to Rado's annex, where he discovers Rhea, being held captive at its peak cell. She said she had to inform Adol of something, and knowing he had already gone to the tower, she felt her best chance was to allow herself to be captured and have Adol find her. While roundabout, it did work. She wants to tell him about the man who locked her in this room, and he who controls the Asterian monsters. Dark fact. A fearsome man who wants to control all of Asteria and maybe then the world beyond. He must not obtain the Books of Ys, else his plans may succeed. Before he leaves, Rhea gives Adol a special monocle in her possession, one that translates the Ys text for him to read himself. She instructs Adol that his sword and armor is made of not silver, but Claria, the metal of Ys, and it will be required to defeat the demonic essence within dark fact. Meeting with Luda once more, he reveals that he recognizes one of the books of Ys, an heirloom passed down through his family before losing it when he was a boy. He is a descendant of the priest Gemma of Ys, likely Rico Gemma. After numerous floors of combat, Adol finally makes it to the peak of Darm Tower, the 25th floor where a sorcerer, Dark Fact, awaits him. Fact compliments Adol's accomplishments, but says it only expedited his goals. Since he has the last Book of Ys, the Book of Fact, and with Adol's defeat, the other five will be in his possession as well. The battle rages, spells are cast, and swords are slashed, as the floor crumbles until Adol is able to land a final finishing blow with his Claria sword, causing the sorcerer to crumble to ash leaving just his woven Claria cape. When the dust settles, 
Adolf finds, wrapped in the cape, the final book of Ys. He reads the final book, and suddenly, with all six books in his possession, he feels a feeling of serenity. As a white light begins to fill his vision, throughout Asteria, demons begin to dissolve in the air. Adol felt the weight lifted from his heart at the top of Darm Tower. As he looked over at Asteria, he wondered if they were rejoicing, if his friends in Darm Tower had made it out, and if Fina had regained her memory. He did not have time to think much before the light that was engulfing him turned into a pillar toward the heavens, as Adol felt himself thrust into the sky. He travels by way of light above the tower. Through the clouds, a landmass in the distance starts to appear before the young hero loses consciousness. Right behind him, Rhea and Fina soar towards the heavens. With the defeat of Dark Fact, their memories were unlocked. They were indeed the Eldine goddesses of Ys, and they need Adol for an even greater threat than Dark Fact. In a mysterious land, a young girl, Lilia, sees a light streak across the sky and land in a field near her village. There she finds a young red-haired swordsman worn from battle, with six books spread throughout. She stays with him until he awakens, at which point Adol asks who she is and where he is. She is relieved he's okay and says that he is near Lance Village, in the land of Ys. Adol succumbs to his exhaustion, and Lilia takes him back to her hometown of Lance Village. Meanwhile, the goddesses reconvene, saying they will trust Adol to reach them when he is ready, at the Shrine of Solomon. Adol awakens in the care of Lilia and her mother, currently being overseen by a doctor, who assures the boy that his injuries aren't serious. After a few days rest, Adol is back on his feet. He talks with Lilia's mother, Banoa, to pass the time. She confirms that this is indeed Ys, and she's a bit startled by the fact that Adol sounds as if he's come from somewhere besides Ys. She says Adol was found by Lilia between Lance Village and the ruins of Mundoria. Apparently, the ruins and its nearby mine have become infested with monsters lately, which has hindered the town's ability to find iron in the mine, or herbs that grow in the area. Apparently, the village's primary doctor, Flair, tends to still go into the mine looking for herbs still. Benoa asks Adol to deliver a letter to Flair if he runs into him while taking a look around. Adol starts to explore Lance Village and quickly learns from the clinic that Dr. Flair is out at the mine right now. However, he has sent a carrier pigeon back to the clinic, detailing that there has been an unfortunate cave-in, and he's now trapped in the lower levels of the mine. Flair's brother Leonor, who helped nurse Adol back to health, begs Adol for his assistance in getting his brother back. Wanting to repay the man for his kindness in taking care of him, Adol agrees. In exchange, the clinic provides some money for new equipment. Adol then speaks to the town elder, Cornell who tells the swordsman that he witnessed two new faces over by the mine, who bore a strikingly similar resemblance to the goddesses. Adol has his suspicions as to who these two might be. The elder asks to take a look at Adol's books, and confirms them to be the books written by the six priests of old. He says that deep in the mine, there is a place called the Sanctuary of Toll, with statues of the six priests. It may be time to return these books to their statues. Cornell finishes by telling Adol that a man named Astol guards the front of the mine, and Adol should tell him that he has Cornell's blessing, and he will likely let him pass. Lilia shows Adol her favorite spot overlooking almost all of Ys, as she wonders where the demons came from. Lilia sees Adol off with a fresh-picked apple as he leaves the village towards the ruins. At the ruins, Adol comes across a statue of the two goddesses, and their familiar faces. Eventually he comes across Astol, who does indeed let Adol in once he mentions Cornell's blessing. He is let into the mines by Astol, and it isn't long before Adol finds one of the priest statues and leaves a book at the base of the statue. The priest's spirit speaks to Adol, 
saying that like down below, demons are wreaking havoc upon the land and the heavens, and the one controlling them is in Solomon Shrine. Adol continues through the maze that is the Rustini Mine and the Sanctuary of Toll. Through this dense exploration, he is able to locate the rest of the priest statues, where he proceeds to leave the books at the statue's base as planned. Along the way, Adol finds the good doctor Flair Rawl, who Adol digs out of his cave in. Flair expresses thanks despite not recognizing his rescuer. Adol explains his arrival, and doesn't forget to hand over Benoah's letter. Flair reads it and is surprised to read that Lilia has been falling ill, and his presence is required immediately. To find a cure, a specific fruit and flower are needed, a rota fruit and salsetta flower specifically. He will head back to Lance to care for Lilia as he asks Adol to find what he needs. Fortunately, the rota fruit is common in the ruins above ground, and it isn't long before Adol finds a salsetta flower in the damp areas of the caves. Adol runs into trouble finding the final statues, but after a fight with a horrific creature, a returning Velagunder, Adol continues onward, and five of the six books are with their proper statues. He feels like he has explored as much of the mine as he can, and still no sixth statue for the priest fact. Either way, Lilia is more important, as Adol returns to Lance to deliver the ingredients. Dr. Flair makes the medicine, and Adol delivers it to Benoa. Benoa is overjoyed and thanks Adol profusely. As Adol leaves, he is surprised by Lilia on the front porch. She apologizes for eavesdropping, but apparently had no idea she had a symptomless illness like this, and thanks Adol for risking his life for her sake. After taking the medicine, Lilia indeed feels much better with plenty of color returning to her face. As thanks, the family gives Adol a teleportation rod for him to use on his travels. Adol feels a bit lost as to where the final priest statue could be. Before long though, some townsfolk inform him that one of the residents, Gila, has had a problem with loud creepy noises in his basement, and with no other leads, Adol offers to help if only to pass the time. Gila happily welcomes assistance and shows Adol the basement. Down in the basement, Adol can definitely feel an evil presence and some noises in the distance. Adol was able to find a bell deep in the mine that echoes a similar evil presence, and in an effort to lure out whatever is watching, he decides to ring the bell. Suddenly, demons come crashing through the wall, as Adol finds himself in a basement infested with demonic beasts. After taking care of the immediate infestation, Adol decides to investigate the path from which the demons emerged from. Further exploration shows that the path leads to an unexplored area of the Sanctuary of Toll. Here is where the final priest resided and among other things, tells him that the path to Solomon's shrine has now been opened. A scroll of guidance is given to Adol, as he is told to seek out the goddess statue at the ruins of Mundoria. He does so, and when he unfurls the scroll, words begin to appear out of nowhere. It is the six priests writing to Adol, describing him as the last hope of Is telling him to seek out other goddess statues to gain further wisdom on his trek towards his final destination, the home of the goddesses, Solomon Shrine. Adol makes his way back through the Sanctuary of Toll, where a new path has opened toward the Ice Ridge of Noltia, on his way to Solomon Shrine. Meanwhile, a dark sage watches Adol from afar, making preparations for a certain ceremony. With the return of the demonic essence within the Black Pearl, Darm had reawakened and kept his promise to the Darklings, resurrecting Zava as a mindless demon commander, and Dalis, who was now Darm's second in command, serving him faithfully. Dalis asks a soldier to continue the sacrifices they are making in the name of their lord. Magic, sword, and shield in hand, Adol makes his way through the snowy terrain and icy caves. Eventually, he uses the teleportation rod to return to Lance to recover, buy some new items, and check in on some friends. He is surprised to hear from Benoa that she doesn't know where Lilia is. She hasn't been home for some time, and she's worried. Adol becomes so as well as he promises to keep a lookout for her during his journeys. He returns to complete exploring the icy ridge. Eventually, Adol finds himself going deeper and deeper into the ice caves, and suddenly, he no longer feels the chill of the tundra air. No, in fact, 
he's becoming quite warm, and only getting more so, until arriving at a new cave, one deep underground, filled with the lava of the Moat of Burned Bless, another stop on the road to the Shrine of Solomon. It isn't long before Adol hesitates. He thinks he hears something watching him in the distance. Wait, there it was again. Following the small creature leads Adol to the Rue's nest. It seems an enclave of Rue's that were left behind on East had built a small nest within this warm area for themselves. Through his journeys, Adol was able to learn altar magic that can briefly turn himself into a Rue to converse with the denizens of this hovel. They talk about how they were forced into this cave to hide from the demons, and they mention a settlement deeper into the cave system. This appeared to be a separate sect of Ruse that were brought up to Ys when the island was separated from the surface. Through the lava caverns, Adol can see a town in the distance, signs of a civilization, a fence, and a drawbridge in people, the colony of lava. On the opposite side of town, towards the shrine, the drawbridge is raised, and the bridge guard Reba seems against lowering it. He clarifies that the mechanism was broken by demons and it can't be lowered at the moment. Though Adol is suspicious, but doesn't know what to do. Maybe if Reba won't talk to Adol, he'll talk to Adoru. Adol sneaks away to transform and approaches Reba, who doesn't seem too alarmed. He assumes that the Rue is working for the demons and is coming to check on him. He details the deal he has made with a man in a black cape. In exchange for not allowing Adol to cross, the demons will return Ruba's kidnapped son, Tarf. Adol transforms back and tells Ruba that he knows what's going on. Though he offers to go save Tarf in exchange for passage, Ruba agrees but says Adol is crazy to even try. Adol reassures him that he's not and he's more capable than he looks. Ruba wishes him luck, along with some earrings that enhance the user's hearing. Adol travels deeper into the passage until he finally hears a cry. A boy behind a crack in the wall calls out. The wall is tough, it won't be easy to break through. Suddenly, another, deeper voice asks Tarf a question. Tarf says his name is Keith and says he can break down the wall with the help of the Black Pearl and asks Adol to find it. With Darm unsealed and reawakened, now residing within the floating island of Ys, the Black Pearl's power was unleashed as well. Adol could already feel its presence lingering throughout the island. The magic that he used to teleport himself, transform into a Rue, and even cast a fireball attack from his fists, all came from the Black Pearl's power. Darm wanted the Pearl in a secure location after his awakening, and so his minions moved the Pearl to a secluded cove within the lava-filled tunnels guarded by molten beasts. However, this doesn't stop Adol on his search, and before long he is able to locate the Pearl and defeat its guardians. He removes the Pearl from its current placement within the forehead of a carved statue, and returns to Tarf and Keith. Adol hands over the pearl through the wall, and Tarf is able to grab it. Keith takes the pearl and busts through not just the back wall, but through the steel bars of the cell. Tarf is in shock as Adol makes his way in, Keith rushing out before having the time to say anything. Tarf says Keith is actually a demon, but a nice one, who can speak with humans. A note left by Keith says he had a dream that one of the goddesses came to him, telling him to head to the Shrine of Solomon. Adol escorts Tarf back to the lava colony, and a grateful Ruba holds up his end of the bargain, allowing Adol to pass. After taking down a truly horrifying monstrosity, Adol finally sees light again, and arrives in a village right next to the Shrine of Solomon, the town of Ramia village. Adol makes his way around the village inquiring as to what's been going on in the area so close to the shrine. He meets Gorto, a young man guarding the entrance to the shrine. He asks for Adol's opinion on a matter. Apparently, three days ago, he had a really strange dream where two blue-haired women appeared, telling Gorto that soon a red-haired swordsman would come and he should offer him his help. Adol explains he needs to get into the shrine, but Gorto says that even if he lets Adol pass, there are demons guarding a second gate across the bridge. As he thinks about what to do next, Gorto's expression turns melancholy. He says that a friend of his, Seda, went into the shrine recently. Gordo tried to stop him, but wasn't able to. 
He's worried about his friend. Seda is trying to rescue his fiancée, Maria, who was kidnapped by the demons. Seda was unable to sit by and do nothing while his love was trapped in the shrine. Gordo expects Seda to handle himself well enough in the shrine, but he's unsure how far he'll get or how long he'll last. If Adol insists on entering the shrine, he encourages him to at least talk to Hadat first, a retired warrior who may have some advice. Adol goes to see Hadat, who reveals that he's actually Seda's father. If he's serious in heading into the shrine, he asks him to look for his son, who hasn't returned since he went in three days ago. Adol accepts, and in return, Hadat gives him a Lila shell, which will allow him to talk with Hadat from anywhere in East. With this in hand, Gordo allows Adol entrance and wishes him luck. As Gordo said, two demon knights in gold guard the entrance across the bridge. Adol quickly turns into Adoru and approaches the guards. By showing them his equipment, he convinces them that he has slain Adol and wishes to report this to the head demon. They oblige and allow him access to the Shrine of Solomon and tell Adol to report to Mistress Zava. The shrine is divided into six sectors, one for each priest, and is an absolute labyrinth. Navigating the shrine proves to be one of Adol's biggest challenges thus far. Eventually, he is able to locate a receptionist to Mistress Zava. Approaching her as a Rue, she informs Adol that Zava is attending a meeting in a nearby sector, but if it's urgent news concerning Adol, she deems it fit to allow access. She writes him a pass to see Mistress Zava nearby. Adol finds the conference chambers and listens in on the correspondence. High-ranking mages discuss how the sacrifices have escaped, along with the Master Shrine Key. They also detail a password to enter into a deeper area of the shrine, which Adol makes note of. When giving the password, Adoru learns that a sacrifice is known to be hiding out in the shrine's subterranean canal, and people are searching. At the entrance to the canal, Adol is confronted by the head wizard Dallas, who tells him that he must leave the shrine, and this is his final warning. Adol rejects the offer, and in return, Dallas curses the swordsman, permanently changing him into a rue of a unique color to distinguish him to the guards. Adol can't navigate the canal like this, and returns to Ramia village. In the village, Adoru talks with the elder, Reg. He takes him downstairs to a hidden well of holy water that's been kept in the village for hundreds of years. If filled with a sacred cup that Adol found in the shrine, it can purify him of the rue form. After doing so, Adol returns to the shrine and the entrance to the canal. Adol eventually finds the runaway's hideout and explains he's here to help. There are kidnapped people from all across East here, including the missing Lilia. Lilia explains that they were rescued thanks to a benevolent demon named Keith, who is away at the moment. Keith gave Lilia the shrine key though, in order to pass on to Adol. Adol receives the key, when suddenly a looming voice appears in the distance. Dallas reveals himself in the canal, congratulating Adol, who he calls the goddess's lapdog. He thanks him for leading Dallas to the runaway's hideout. He wishes to make Adol suffer and punishes the runaways as a result. He saves the runaways from a proper sacrifice by instead turning them all to stone. As thanks and a bit of survivor's guilt, Adol is spared from the petrification curse for now. Adol leaves the canal, more determined than ever, to end Dallas and free his friends. Navigating deeper into the shrine thanks to the master key, Adol finds a different area of the canal to explore. He also uncovers a spider beast guarding a statue of the goddesses. Using the statue, Adol is teleported to another area of the shrine. Finding another canal entrance deeper into the shrine, Adol explores and hears word of Keith being spotted nearby. Adol finds the benevolent beast and introduces himself. He's been hiding momentarily as he needs to rest in order to keep his emotions and demonic thoughts in check. He says through this canal, Adol can enter the goddess's palace to see the woman of note. Keith gives a key that controls the floodgates and wishes him luck. Adol reaches the palace where the two goddesses, Rhea and Fina, lie in wait. These are just projections, however. The real goddesses lie in the core of the shrine, underground. To access it, they require an idol and pendant belonging to someone turned to stone. Thus, Dallas must be defeated. 
Adol finds Keith at the base of a bell tower, known as Campanile of Lane, where the sacrifices are occurring, and also where Dallas is residing. Guarding the entrance is Zava, whom Keith reveals is too strong for him to face. Adol confronts Zava, and the battle ensues. Adol is able to defeat Zava once and for all. Adol emerges on the other side of the arena, but as soon as he enters the tower proper, a sacrificial bell begins to toll. At the base of the tower, he sees a chained Maria, who tells Adol to back away. Her life is forfeit, and he shouldn't have to die too. She tells him that at five strikes, those at the base of the tower will be sacrificed, and Adol rushes to the top of the tower. The bells strike every few floors. At the peak awaits Dallas. He reveals he is impressed by Adol, and he thinks he's earned an explanation. The descendants of the priests of Is are a danger to Darm and the demons, and the sacrificial rituals are meant to root out and destroy them. The descendants are all noticeably and predictably heroic, meaning a descendant is likely either to be a kidnapped sacrifice, or someone willing to rush in and save a sacrifice, meeting their end amongst the forces of the shrine. As he finishes his speech, the bell rings a fifth time, and a dark aura surrounds the tower. A flustered adult makes his way down the tower once again, finding the dreaming idol on his way down. At the base, he finds Maria, who lies lifeless in chains. Adol returns to the goddesses with the idol, who say that using its power and the black pearl, the idol can lift the stone curse. The last person to have the black pearl was Tarf, and conveniently, Habat has called in, saying that Tarf is in Rumia village right now. Tarf reveals that the black pearl fell out of his pocket, and Adol assumes that a demon now has it in their possession. Adol finds the pearl being held in a remote part of the shrine. Now, by placing the pearl in the indentation of the idol's forehead, the curse has been lifted. Adol uses the idol at the highest point of the shrine, at the top of the bell tower. He confirms the spell worked as he returns to the runaway's hideout. Keith arrives with a means of warping the runaways back to Rumia village. They do so, but first, one of the runaways, Bots, gives Adol the gold pendant the goddesses were looking for. Lilia, however, is once again missing. The goddesses have told her she is necessary and asks for her to come with them to the shrine core. While navigating through the canal, Adol finally comes across Seda, who reveals he was also turned to stone and later saved by Adol. Adol unfortunately informs Seda of Maria's sacrifice. Seda is struck with immense grief, but thanks Adol for trying to save her. He says that he has no use for his legendary sword passed through his family anymore. He gives Adol the Sword of Claria to continue the fight and asks him to tell Habat of his safety. After being told this by Hadat, he sees Adol worthy of receiving the other passed down heirloom, a set of Clarion armor. The final battle draws near. Adol heads deeper into the canal, where he finds a passage leading deeper and deeper until he finally approaches Dallas, where the two must finally do battle. The Master Sage versus the Skilled Swordsman do battle under the Shrine of Is. Using the might of Claria, Adol deals blow after blow and manages to strike down the spellcaster once and for all. After getting his bearings, he sees that Dallas was guarding a glowing orb in the back of the room. When Adol touches the orb, he is teleported to the core of Ancient Is, a crypt of mystical technology deep within the island. Here Adol meets Tarf, who says that he needs to hurry as everyone is waiting for him. He later runs into Maria, who survived her ordeal by redirecting the ritual's energy into her magic bracelet. Keith later brought her to this place. Keith and Gorto await even further. Lilia is here as well, who says that everyone here felt drawn to come to this place and was given a mystic ring by the goddesses. Lilia gives Adol the ring and using it, he gains access to see the goddesses. Here he finds them, their physical bodies being held in place by an immensely powerful energy. Suddenly, Darm reveals his presence, the mastermind behind Dallas, and earlier, dark fact. Suddenly, Gobon and Gemma arrive with the silver harmonica. Yis has fallen, quite literally, and Adol's old friends have arrived to help. With the harmonica, he plays the song of the goddess, freeing the twins. Gemma says he has brought the Claria shield for him to use as well. The goddesses reveal they need Adol to defeat Darn, 
as he is too powerful to just be resealed again. Vina says she is glad to see Adol again, and apologizes for not telling him about her origin on the surface. The goddesses empower Adol's blade before wishing him luck before the final battle against Darn, as he draws the demons down to the core. Adol faces Darm, the source of Issa's magic and demon kind. The battle and the origin of the Black Pearl begins between Adol and the King of Demons. The two fight while Adol's allies keep the demons at bay within the core. Eventually, in desperation, Darm gives all of his energy and sense of self into the Black Pearl, becoming a manifestation of the corrupt magic within. Through the strength and experience of Adol's journeys, he is able to put the finishing blow into Darm and the Black Pearl, ending the demon's reign by finally removing magic from the land of Ys. With that, the goddesses warp Adol to an outlook in Solomon Shrine, where his allies stand. With Ys having descended back to Asteria, Darm Tower can be seen in the distance. Emotions run wild in the aftermath. Both Tarf and Maria reveal that they are in fact descendants of priests, Hadol and Mesa, respectively. Maria's bracelet was in fact a relic passed down from the original priest. Gorto as well is a descendant of priest Dabi. Keith has also reverted back to his human appearance. With magic gone, his curse was forcibly lifted, and reveals himself to be a descendant of the fact lineage, likely Toll's half of the family. Lilia reveals that she was a descendant of Hadal as well, and likely is some sort of distant cousin of Tarf's. It seems that descendants of priests were drawn to the core of Ys for the final battle against the Black Pearl's magic. The goddesses express their happiness that Ys and Asteria are finally united, and that there is no need for goddesses or priests. Rhea says that she and her sister will watch over the Black Pearl, ensuring its power is never used for evil again as she and everyone else leaves Adol and Fina alone to say their goodbyes. Fina echoes Rhea's opinion that goddesses are no longer needed in this world, but laments over the good memories she has made, especially those with Adol. She thanks Adol for everything he has done, and tells him that she needs to join Rhea now. She asks Adol to remember her from time to time, and when he does remember her, please have it be as Fina, the woman he was friends with, not the mythical goddess of Ys. She bids him farewell, and leaves Adol overlooking the shrine and Darm Tower. In the aftermath, an elated Seda marries his lover Maria, Keith mourns his sister, and Tarf returns to the colony of Lava. Lilia returns to Lance with Gobon and Luta, who start to make connections in welcoming the land to Asteria once again. Dogi has already made his way to Lance since the land had rejoined. Lilia welcomes Adol, who returns to Lance after saying farewell to the goddesses, where he is welcomed by his friends. Rhea and Fina seal themselves in stasis with the Black Pearl. Adol and Lilia say their goodbyes at the site where they met, overlooking the Shrine of Solomon, before Adol makes his plans to set out on new journeys, as his call for adventure has only been strengthened after acquiring a taste for the unknown. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you've been a fan of the East Chronology series so far, thank you so much for your patience, and I hope this was worth the wait. This episode was definitely a bit of a doozy to get done, but I'm happy I saw it through to completion, and I'm pretty proud of the result. I'm gonna take a bit of a step away from the East Chronology series though, and nothing major, just a couple months. I have a few other video projects that I want to complete, and as much as I love East, it's still possible to be burnt out by it. I don't want to lose any of the attention or interest in the series that has kept me going this far into the chronology. Expect part 4 to be out maybe late September-ish, I think. Beyond that, again, hope you enjoyed the episode, and as always, have a good one guys. Wishing you the best.